everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Girl. In today's episode of Let's Girl, we're going to be speaking with Roxanne Chanoy. Roxanne is the strategic partner manager for Reels as well as community on Instagram. Roxanne is someone I have gone to many times for advice on various things with regards to Instagram and I think that she's going to be packed with information and it's going to be very, very helpful for those of you who are watching or listening, whether you are a new creator, whether you're a brand or whether you're just an Instagram consumer who wants to understand the app a little bit better. Hi Roxanne, welcome to Let's Girl. I want you to start off with please telling us a little bit about what you do at Instagram. Well, Anam, thank you for having me. Very, very excited to be here and um, talk about all things Instagram and all things Reels. Um, especially Reels because it's been a little over a year since we've launched. So very, very excited to, to deep dive more on that bit. Um, I think one of the coolest things about um, the way that we're set up in Instagram is that we have a super large partnerships team uh, that works across, um, you know, everything from movie studios to, to content creators at various stages of their journey. Um, I'm one small, tiny cog uh, part of that. Um, but yeah, just very happy to like deep dive on all things today and uh, can't wait to get started. I'm so excited to have you here as well because I feel like I do so much content with regards to like tips for newer creators and you know I hosted a series of workshops for new creators in uh, lockdown one in 2020 so we got a whole lot of questions from like followers new creators and of course I will be sprinkling those questions along the way uh, through the course of this session with you because I think it's going to be very very informative and very helpful very knowledgeable for anyone who's watching or listening out there first things first what I want to ask you which I feel is something that's really tough but also has a lot of advantage for a creator that is starting out on Instagram today like I feel like the advantage of starting out right now is that the influencer space is now so well carved out that you know it can be a full-fledged career but I guess the downside from where I'm standing is also that there's now a lot more people to so so to speak compete with I don't like the term compete with but you know what I mean when I say it versus from when like I started 10 years ago there were like four or five creators in the entire country so what tips would you give to someone who is starting out like now in 2020 um, I think it's a great question. I think two things to follow, right? Um, I think one is being authentic and the other is staying consistent, right? And I'll break down both things for you. I think right now we're just witnessing enormous shifts in how people create and enjoy culture, right? Um, and I think one of those things that happens so exciting is the shift of power from the organization to the individual, Right. Um, I think athletes are arguably more, you know, um, sort of relevant than teams, right? Uh, you don't need to showcase your work if you're an artist uh, in a gallery. Uh, you don't need a music label to launch your own music, right? So this democratization of content, and I, I think is just one of the most exciting things that we're sort of seeing, right? Um, I think to have a following, right? You You need to make sure that you consistently engage and build right so you need to have a plan for the kind of content that you put out and need to be very very clear with the story that you want to tell right and you need to sort of tell it over and over again right so i think consistency is key um the minute you feel like you've uh you know you've sort of hit on something that's that's working for you keep building on it right like we always say it's it's a marathon it's not a sprint right this is for the long term so sort of you need to keep at it um i think the other thing is is authenticity um one of the things that works beautifully on Instagram is that it is truly a platform for authentic expression, right? The minute you have a distinct voice, something that screams, this is me, um, it, it just lands and tends to work that much better because the connection that you make with your community is that much deeper, right? Um, so I feel like, think about, uh, think about you, think about what is your most authentic self, and have a plan for landing that as consistently as possible, right? And I think you'll be more than fine. I like that you said consistency because one of the questions we had from, you know, someone was, uh, is like, is there a magic mantra to consistency? I feel like we've gotten a lot of questions with regards to consistency. And like for someone like me, consistency is once a day. Sometimes I try to post twice a day. But I have been through a phase in my Instagram career where I've posted like two and three times a day. And then I realized, okay, the way, um, I guess over a period of time, the way things are, it's changed. Um, the, the 
the magic word algorithm is going to come up at some point in the in the process of this we'll touch upon that in a bit as well um, but it is that a definition to what you consider is consistent because it's so different from the way i look at it versus maybe how you guys do you're absolutely right uh, i think the definition of consistency is different for different people right when we say consistency we say um what we mean is pick a posting or a content creation cadence that works for you right um so essentially in it could be it could be different for different people and it should be right because everybody's audience is unique uh, i think everybody's journey is unique right so uh, you could you know you could be someone who you know creates content multiple times a day and wants to post that and that's fine right and you could be someone who wants to have a really really uh careful thoughtful presence and you know you have a bunch of things to juggle so you'll probably post maybe a couple of times a week right both are fine i think it's just important to to know what consistency means personally to you and most importantly stick to that right because you're building you're building something with the community that follows you you're building um a relationship with you know the people that follow you right so um they're going to sort of wait for your posts they're going to know um you know when you will be posting something um that is super important to you so i think showing up for them is important and so therefore you just need to sort of know what that is specifically for you and build back to that so listening to your audience and seeing how often they actually want to see from you is a huge part of kind of you know knowing when to deliver is is that is that a fair take away on that i think listening to your audience and getting feedback i think on all aspects is super important right whether it's whether it's content creation whether it's posting cadence whether it's uh what should i do next uh, i think i think some of the, the best creators that you know we've seen do really well on the platform the bond that they have with their community is just a marvel to see right so uh, and we spend time investing in that right whether it's you know frequent lives where they just turn up to speak to them or for example uh you know just sort of source ideas on you know what they should be creating next even collaborations you know um showing up for them repeatedly uh, i think you should treat your instagram presence as almost your journey right and the more authentically you take your your community with on that journey with you um i think the deeper the connection gets and you know you'll see that happening across your account as well you know everything you're saying about what a creator should do i feel like when i hear you speak about it it kind of makes me think that that's what instagram as a platform has also done like i feel like when instagram started out it was about it was about those low fi hi fi filters and cuz that was the time for it and i feel like it evolved we got fo- we got videos at some point we got carousels at some point um and of course because i feel like the consumers are now uh taking in and loving more short form content it's been a year to reels now and uh, is it safe i i feel like i w- i would really want your input on this because I feel like Reels is here to stay. I feel like Reels has become that one uh product that you've brought that has really made people create on the go. It kind of reminds me of Instagram when it started because it was genuinely instant and I find myself like taking snippets of videos, editing it and posting it immediately because it's just so easy to do it right there. Um uh, so is it safe to assume Reels is the is the future of Instagram? Like is that is that what you would agree with so i think it's a it's a really interesting question and um we why did we launch reels right um we launched reels because entertainment was one of the reasons why people were coming to instagram right and our community wanted a way to watch and create entertaining short form video right and therefore we we launched reels right and like i said before we're seeing the format completely democratized the way content is consumed and created in india right which is so exciting i think it's spawned an entirely new cohort of of creators who for whom short form is a forte right and you know who are creating building breaking trends from all over the country right so i think it's a super super exciting space to be in i think at our end right we're constantly working on ways to ensure that um in the context of reels they have you know more and more creative tools and ways of expression uh, as possible right so since reels launched and it's been a little over a year um we've increased the time limit of reels from 15 seconds to 30 seconds and now 60 seconds right um we've launched remix which is an amazing way to collaborate and you know just have your take on something that's super fun and trending at that moment 
um, we've made a bunch of improvements to our audio experience, right? So everything from saving audio clips, uh, sharing audio pages, you being able to browse for trending songs so that, you know, you're totally like on that edge of pop culture at any given point in time. Uh, and of course, like a fan favorite, uh, it's insights on reels, right? So I think if you just look at that journey, right, we're really, really, we sort of really made sure that um, when it comes to this expression using reels, you know, people have as much at their disposal as possible, right? And of course, I think we keep working on it and, you know, keep listening to our community and making that experience, um, you know, better as we go along. So this, I feel like now is a good time to jump into the, the algorithm word that everyone talks about. Because you brought up insights on reels and I feel like there's, obviously there's a huge, like as a creator, I can tell you this, there's a huge difference in reach between other products and reels. And I guess that's because reels has been designed to, you know, kind of, help discover new pages and new accounts. That's kind of what I've made of it. Please correct me if I'm if I'm wrong on that. Um, but tell us more about the word algorithm and if you can just shine a little light on how the different algorithms for different products within Instagram works. So I think with the algorithm, right? And, um, you know, I love it when we get an algorithm question because we always get an algorithm question, right? Um, I think if you look at, when we launched in 2010, right, uh, I think it's super important to first just go back to why there is an algorithm, right? When we launched in 2010, Instagram was a chronological feed of posts, right? And we had pretty much images and, you know, it was an infinite scroll and based on, on, on timestamps, right? But I think as more and more people joined, it became impossible for them to see everything. Right. And what happened is by, I mean, forget posts that they cared about. It was just impossible for them to pretty much see everything. Right. And by 2016, what happened is people were literally missing 70% of all their posts and feeds, including almost half their posts from close connections. Right. And therefore we built and introduced a feed where, which is based on ranked posts and which essentially is based on what you care about the most. Right. I think the best thing for the algorithm, right, is please, please check out for everybody listening, check out the Instagram blog. We have a blog post there that breaks down exactly what the algorithm is about, right? And I'm, I'm not a product expert, but uh, definitely for everybody listening, please check it out and, you know, go through it. I think it just debunks a lot of myths, you know, about, you know, one format versus the other or any of those things, right? So definitely encourage everybody here to, to go check that out. I love that there's so much uh, happening on the Instagram blog in general. I also, obviously, because I follow you, I feel like I get a lot of snippets, a lot of takeaways. So I am going to recommend for any new creators out there who are trying to understand Instagram better, the Instagram algorithm better, uh, make sure you go follow Roxanne because I feel like those little snippets, even for someone like me who has been around since Instagram started, uh, you know, like been on the app right since it started and been on Facebook before that. Uh, I feel like for me, it's like a little revision class every time I sit and I read something because it's very easy to not just forget, but just for uh, for us to be like, but why isn't this post working? Because you get so em emotionally invested and attached to the content you create that sometimes you're just like, no, 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 but why? And then sometimes I'll read that one post and be like, you know what? Yeah, there wasn't a call to action to that. I get it now. I, I think you make such a great point about being emotionally invested in your content and um i think a i think a it's a great thing right like you you need to care about what you create right that's the only way you know others will care about what you create right um, but i think just always looking at it in perspective and knowing that you're so much more than just that one individual post right and and sometimes you fall in love with your own ideas right so uh, and i think everyone's had that that uh, that moment where something that you've invested a lot in hasn't done well and just something that you created on a lark has just blown up, right? So uh, I think it's just interesting when that, when that happens and just goes to show that there's just so much still to be done and so much to learn and, um, you know, just depending upon the way that, you know, people consume and, you know, have a relationship with you. Yeah, and I feel like it, it's great that you said that sometimes the most well thought out, well produced photos, posts, videos, whatever they may be, may actually not end up doing well. And I've observed this because I feel like whenever I do something that's more instant or when I put up something that's a little bit more personal for that matter, um, uh, even if it's just literally a handheld, you know, like, 
off my phone, not thought out, no filters, no edits, no nothing. And I'll be like, oh my god, that did better. And I just feel like it has to do with how much you're sharing. And I keep telling myself even now, I'm like, call to action, call to action. Just like, you know, I I I go there sometimes. Um, and I completely agree. In fact, I think relatability is a really powerful thing, right? Uh, I think when when and it goes back to what we've been talking about uh, on authenticity, right? Uh, if if you if you show up as your real self, you know, without anything on, you know, um, imperfections, all of those things, I think just the bond that you have through the content with whoever's watching it is that much stronger, and so it tends to do well. Um, and I think for anybody listening, right, you don't have to show up with perfect content. It doesn't have to be highly produced, right? It just needs to be, you know, super you. It needs to be very authentic. It needs to be ideas led, and you know, you're going to be more than okay. That kind of answers this one very specific question I had, which kind of made me think as well. Uh, it said, does stuff like lighting, video quality affect uh, affect whether my reel will be on explore? So I feel like you get your answer right there. that it doesn't have to be like shot in 4k and you know produced in a x or y way it can be something off the fly on your phone so long as it's genuinely relatable um totally i think i think we need to step away from the notion that your content needs to be perfect right um with like lighting and editing and those kinds of things i think we as a platform really encourage people to be their authentic selves right that's 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 how it It, it you know it, it just is forms deeper bonds and connections right through the content and you know through your presence as well i think with with respect to explore right um and i'm not again i'm not from the product team and from the partnership team so the caveat there but i'll try and explain um you know how how this works essentially explore right is is designed to help you discover new things right um based versus say something like a feed or a stories which largely is made up of content of people or accounts that you already follow right so there's that distinction the first, the way that explore works is the first thing we do is identify a set of posts to rank to show you right um and we look at signals basis the stuff that you you sort of engaged with right stuff that you've liked shared commented um you know just overall sort of had a connection with and say you've um you've liked a bunch of posts from bastion for example right uh, you love their food you know um you you know you love their you know their content those kinds of things so you've liked you've liked a bunch of posts there right at our end we look at who else likes bastion's pictures right and what are other accounts are those guys interested in right and um maybe many people who like bastion are also into opa for example right and they like a bunch of content from there right and so next time when you open instagram we'll we might show you a couple of pictures or videos from opa simply because we've seen that triangulation right so in practice essentially uh if you're interested in a topic we're going to show you content based on related topics uh to that content right that's essentially how explore works but overall um i think just stick to your own authentic voice um and that's really what you know it, the whole thing should be about okay i have to ask because this was another one of those questions that came in like in dozens uh facebook now has obviously monetization features which is i feel fantastic because it encourages more people to do organic content um and also if you're a full time creator it kind of uh, lessens your dependability on brand sponsorships right in that case is that happening on instagram any time soon i know that you've launched some features that i saw that international creators have already i think it's rolled out where you can um buy specific i can't remember the term for it because i did look it up but do you want to tell us a little bit about that would love to so i think um i think we want instagram and facebook to serve as a home base for creators right to tell their stories um make a living um and grow their communities right uh, and we want this to happen for someone who's starting out and we also want this to happen for someone who's further along on their journey right so whether you're starting out or whether you're you already sort of you know made it we want this to be a place and we want instagram and facebook to be platforms that truly help you accomplish your goals right i think we're proud of the progress we've made but we know that we've only just scratched the surface right 
and there's of course more that we can do to support creators around the world achieve their goals right um so we've announced a couple of new ways to help creators do that in the us and i'll take you through you know some of those things the first is a native affiliate tool uh, essentially what this does is this allows creators to discover new products available on checkout share them with their followers and earn things for the purchase that they drive and all of this happens within the instagram app itself for creators who want to sell their own merchandise we're essentially making it easier for them to add an existing shop uh, to their handle right or open up a new shop on their instagram profile right so uh, i think this is going to just make it easier for anybody who wants to sell their own merch and we know how important merch is um, you know for so many creators out there right I think the thought process there is the same for India as well. Very, very excited that this is currently testing in the US, and of course, we will share more when there is an update, um, you know, on it for India as well. Amazing. Okay, I have one last question for you, um, and this one reminds me again of Instagram old school because we used to use so many hashtags in an Instagram caption back in the day, um, and I know again that you guys have done posts about this, explaining and simplifying hashtags. Um, but if for someone in a nutshell, if you could be like, okay. how does one use hashtags today because obviously uh, as the algorithm we love using that word around here uh, as the algorithm has evolved and you know there have been changes the way people use instagram has changes has changed has changes um how has hashtags and the importance of hashtags changed in your opinion i think it's a great question and i mean If I had a penny for every time someone asked me the hashtag question, uh, I think. But but with a we totally recognize that hashtags are super important, right? And uh, Anam, you're absolutely right that they've evolved, right? As the platform has evolved, so there are a couple of ways that we think you can maximize, um, you know, the way that hashtags work for you, right? I think the first thing to do is, um, debunk the myth that hashtags are this magical distribution driver, right? um the biggest driver of uh discoverability for you is your own content right if your own content is not distinctive doesn't stand out is not authentic um hashtags aren't going to help sort of um nothing's going to help on that right so the biggest driver uh of of anything on instagram is your content itself right so that's the most important thing to sort of keep in mind i think hashtags are a great way to give context to the post that you're putting up right so uh, any time you put a hashtag in it has to be super relatable to your content which is why using your uber hashtags like pick of the day and those kinds of things don't really work because they're not relevant to the content that you're putting up right so whatever the the piece of content is um look at maybe 3 to 5 hashtags 7 to 8 maybe max you don't have to fill it up with you know a gigantic block of of you know hashtags in my opinion because beyond the point right i don't think there are going to be too many hashtags that will be contextual to your post right so so sort of keep that in mind i think the other really uh, important way that you can sort of use hashtags that almost has an intersection with the way that you're building community as well is to create a hashtag of your own right and um there have been so many examples of the way that that's happened right whether it's beauty beyond size or you know even the way that say um I, i you know i love rithvi's hashtag it's called reels with rithvi and um you know it's an entirely new sort of hashtag that she's created just for all her reels content that people sort of follow i think what that does is a it builds a long term destination for your fans to connect with you because they're going to sort of tag their posts related to you there and when they follow you and follow the hashtag i think it just gives them a chance to engage with your content better right because they're going to see posts related to that hashtag in their content as well right so i think rather than worrying about the exact magical number for everybody listening crack a unique hashtag that's you and find a long term way to weave your content and your community in it right and i think that's just one of the most powerful ways that you can use hashtags for your presence on Instagram. So no more 20 30 hashtags. By the way, I also use reels with anam as a hashtag. I just realized when you said with and I was like, yeah, because I feel like it's the 
it's the simplest way of tracking you know all of my reels in one place and i also encourage people to follow it because i'm like this way you will not miss it even if like my carousels or my videos you know get um, get missed that's one thing that you won't miss and i also highly encourage every creator out there who's watching who's listening to encourage their followers to just turn on that bell notification on the profile because i feel like i i keep alerts on for like close friends because i don't want to land up missing their posts so i feel that's the simplest way of making sure you can genuinely keep up with your favorite creators celebrities friends brands whatever it may be uh but thank you so much for breaking instagram down for us i feel like i really really hope um that this has helped so many of you out there who are looking to build your careers on instagram and i know that i did receive a couple of questions that said oh is it too late to uh, organically grow on instagram there are so many creators out there i mean off the bat i think it's safe to say it really isn't there's always room for more um and i love what roxanne said about authenticity and remember that consistency is subjective roxanne is there anything you'd like to share with us before we end this session thank you anam so much for having me uh this was amazing and uh, i think for any creator out there anam absolutely right. in many ways this is only the beginning i think we are in such an exciting space for all things content um just find your own story to tell uh you know carve your own journey uh i think build a community that cares about your voice and uh, yeah uh, you know i think you'll be slated to have a really really exciting and long term journey on instagram now uh, branam thank you so much for having me this is amazing roxanne thanks so much for taking the time out to do this today you've been so helpful with all of the information you've shared today i'm so sure this is going to help a whole lot of people out there understand the app even better if there's any question that you think has gone unanswered or that you'd like to know a little bit more about Go ahead and leave it as a comment down below. I'm going to leave Roxanne's Instagram down below in the info box. Make sure you guys catch that because I think you should follow her for all of the snippets of information she shares on her feed. I will hopefully meet you guys once again in the next one. Bye.